Hey everyone and welcome to this new lecture on coordinate geometry. In this lecture we will be talking about lines and angles. So we will be starting off with lines and then we will continue with angles. So what basically happens is that whenever you have more than one line, you are going to make and if they cross each other at some particular instant, at some particular position, they are going to make an angle. We are going to start off with that. Uh, with the basic terms and definitions then we're going to continue with the intersecting lines uh, which of course we did look at in the previous lecture we're going to see different types of intersecting lines and the different types of angles that they make with each other and through this as we're going through this we're going to see different angles that we can see in our daily life so that we can relate uh, what we learn in this lecture with our daily lives so in math and geometry what basically happens is that we know what a line is right and uh, uh, if any object is in ideal that is called a line and it is represented as a straight curve you don't have to look at the definitions you don't uh, this is just a theoretical definition that i am telling you so that you know because this is, has to be a proper lecture but other than that i would just say that you we all know what a line is and just concentrate on that we can all visualize what a line is and let's just keep that in mind and move forward with this lecture. Now an angle is formed whenever two lines cross each other. Whenever two lines cross each other, whenever two lines cross each other at a particular instant, at a particular position basically. We're not talking about time over here. By instance I mean a particular position. They're going, there's going to be an angle. Now that angle uh, will be different for different types of line. Sometimes it would be an acute angle or obtuse angle. We're going to go through those as well so that just in case if someone needs to revise what a particular angle is called, we're going to see that. So moving on. So this, this is, this, this is, these are the definitions that we're going to use. So this is a line which has no endpoints. Basically this is going in this direction and this is going in this direction. And a line segment will be any segment of that line. So if you look at this line segment, this is basically this, this and this part of the line. So this is known as the line segment. Ray is another part of a line with one endpoint that continues without, with, without end in one direction. Which basically means that if you start over here, you go in this direction, you keep going in this direction, you're going to make a ray. That is what is a ray. Now, this, these over here are called exact points of location. This is just a particular example that I'm giving that, you know, if you have rather than having a line which goes in a particular direction like these over here, we have this one point over here. These points are scattered uh, across the slide because this is the only point uh, over here. It has no continuation in any direction. So this will be known as a line as a point. Now over here, you can see the definition of intersecting lines and non intersecting lines. Like I said, any two lines that cross each other are going to make an angle. So if you look clearly over here, there's some angle over here and the same angle over here and over here and over here. Don't worry if you don't get this, we're going to go through this in the next slides. And uh, these basically are non intersecting lines. These are just two lines that mm, don't cross each other. And if they continue in this uh, direction to infinity over here, to infinity over there, they're going to go on like this and they're not going to intersect e e each other. So this is the basically a real world example of non-intersecting lines. Uh, you can see non-intersecting lines on the hardwood floors and uh, in these parking slots in the parking lot as you see you can see these yellow uh, lines over here. So these are the non examples of non-intersecting lines that we can see around each uh, around us uh, every day. Now moving on these are perpendicular lines. Now perpendicular lines are basically when you have two when you have a line going in this direction that is basically a horizontal direction and you have another line going in the vertical direction. If they are in a vertical direction and horizontal uh, direction perfectly by that I mean is if they are not slanted uh, slightly uh, if there is a 90 degree angle between the vertical line and the horizontal line then we call those lines the perpendicular line. If you look at the, this diagram closely, you can see that this basically is, is similar to the x and the y axis on the graph. So x axis over here and y axis over here. Now graph represents a perpendicular, two perpendicular lines which are perpendicular, perpendicular to each other. That is what you have to remember that these lines are perpendicular to each other. This horizontal line is perpendicular to this. Um, uh, y axis line, the vertical line, and the vertical line is perpendicular to the x axis line. This is what you have to keep in mind 
that these lines will be perpendicular if they make a 90 degree angle with each other. If you can see these lines crossing each other and if the angle is more than 90 or less than 90, then those lines will not be called a perpendicular lines. They would just be two lines which are intersecting each other and are making an angle. But if they have two lines, if you have two lines, even if they're slanted a bit, but the angle between those two lines is 90, they would be called perpendicular lines. Moving on, the example of perpendicular lines is whenever you find a direction on, on a map. As you can see, this is an example of a Yahoo map. If you find any direction over here, you can see these streets over here. The, they make perpendicular lines with each other. So this is just a random trivial example of perpendicular line. Now, like I said, there are many different types of angles. And uh, when two lines cross each other, more than one type of angle can be formed. Like if we go back to the previous example, if you look at these intersecting lines, this angle is different from this angle. So that's why it is now proven that if two lines intersect each other, more than one angle will be formed and those angles themselves will be more than one type. Like it doesn't have to be that all the angles are acute angles or all the angles are acute, obtuse angles. These angles could be any angles. And that is why uh, we need to go through the definition of these angles so that we can know what which angle is which. Uh, as you can see, these are many different examples. You must have heard those names before as well. The cute, right, obtuse, straight, reflex, and so on and so forth. So let's look at what these angles are. So an acute angle is any angle that is more than 0 degrees and less than 90 degrees. This is a pretty uh, really simple definition for that. So if you have any angle in the range of 0 to 89 or even 89.9 that would be an acute angle. Any angle that is from 0 to less than 90 is called an, octu uh, an acute angle. Any two lines can make an acute angle with each other. Now these are uh, like you have to really spot these angles over here but you know we can find acute angles all over around, around us even if you look around the room that you're sitting right now you would be able to find acute angles this is a right angle now i talked to you about the perpendicular lines uh, the perpendicular lines any two lines are perpendicular if they make a 90 degree angle with each other so this 90 degree angle is called a right angle so as you can see over here this is an angle that these are two lines which are perpendicular to each other. Now right angle definition basically serves two purposes. One is that this will show you that this is a right angle and also that it has these two lines are perpendicular because they have a 90 degree angle with each other. So you know you uh, try to look at this uh, in this way. Two lines which are perpendicular are going to make 90 degree angle between them. Any two lines that have a 90 degree angle with, the, uh, uh, with respect to each other are going to be perpendicular. That is how it is. Moving on. So th th this is like I'm in life or around you in the world. I, th I think this is the, perhaps the most uh, common type of angle that you're going to see uh, because it is almost everywhere. Even in the computer that you're uh, watching this video right now, you can find so many examples of right angles or perpendicular lines around you. Yeah, the most common example is the door that you have in your rooms or your classrooms. Moving on. So the next angle is the obtuse angle. Uh, this is any angle that is more than 90 but less than 180. So if you have any angle from 0 to 90 that's acute. You move, move to 90 that is uh, right angle and then you go from 90 to 180 and then you have an example of an obtuse angle. You can also find many examples of obtuse angles around you. Now the next angle is a straight angle. So the easiest way to remember this angle is to remember that what is a straight line. A straight line makes a straight angle. Any angle of 180 is a straight line. So you remember this in this way. 0 to 90 acute, 90 right angle, 90 to 180 obtuse and 180 is straight angle. So this is the like we're going from 0 towards 180 and this is uh, like I've repeated again and again. Uh, please don't rote learn this. Uh, try to understand the concept behind these uh, angles. That way you don't you're not going to forget it all your life. So 0 to 89 acute then you have 90 right angle 90 to 180 is obtuse and from at 180 you have a straight angle. 
Uh, I think I was wrong when I said that you're going to find 90 degree angles uh, as the most common one. But I think the straight line, the straight angle is the most common one. Now moving on. The reflex angle. Now as we were moving from 0 to 180, we have covered all the four angles uh, that were there from 0 to 180. Now we have the one angle left that is from 180 to 360. And that angle is called a reflex angle. Any angle that is more than 180, whether it be 181 or 359, that angle will be called a reflex angle. So you can see examples of reflex angles uh, in the side over here. I don't have really have examples of reflex angles in real life. Now, why were, why did we go all through all this? We went through all this so that we can talk about the angles formed by the intersection of two lines. Now, the first thing that we're going to discuss in that respect is the adjacent angles. So adjacent angles are just like the name says, adjacent angles. They are adjacent to each other. So we have, if you have a ray in front of you, if you have this uh, segment in front of you, A, B, and D, uh, and you draw a line between them, you're going to have two segments over here. So these two angles that are going to be formed by the making of this line are going are called adjacent angles. You have uh, an A and C, and you have a C and D. So these two angles will be adjacent to each other. Uh, there's no relation to the, in between them. I am just telling you the terminology for now. As for the relation between angles, we have uh, the first one that we're going to discuss is the pair of lines. So we discuss uh, about the straight angle that we talked about in a couple of slides before this. And the straight angle is basically a straight line. So a straight line that is uh, an A and B, and th that is any straight line is going to make an angle of 180. So if you have a line that passes through them, like uh, this line over here in the uh, slide, and you're going to make two s different parts of an angle, A and B. They're going to make 180 uh, angle because, you know, the whole angle is 180. Just because uh, this whole angle is 180, just because you have a line between doesn't change the fact that A is going to be one portion of 180 and B is going to be another portion of 180. So moving on. Now, this is the, uh, the vertically opposite angle. The vertically opposite angle is formed by two lines which cross each other, intersect each other, making uh, an X. If you look at it, you'll see that they're making an X, but it doesn't have to be an X like you make in English. So A and B over here are known as vertically opposite angles. Another uh, angle over here, uh, another two angles which are vertically opposite angles are these angles. This one and this one over here. So these angles over here are called vertically opposite angles and these angles are actually equal. So you're going to come, uh, you're going to do a lot of calculations with this vertically opposite angle because you're going to see as we move on that when a line crosses two other lines, there are going to be a lot of vertically opposite angles. So if you have an A angle over here, if you know the value of this A angle here, then A angle over here, then you can judge the B angle over there because these two will be equal. Just like that, if you have an angle over here, then you can find the angle over here. And remember that a circle makes a 360 degree angle. Which doesn't, this does not mean that this and this angle will be 180 and this and this angle will be 180. What it does mean though is that all of this, this whole is going to be 360. So if you know this angle, if you know this angle, uh, well, if you know this angle, you can find this angle because this and this, these angles are equal. Just like that, if you have this angle and this angle, these two angles over here, and you need to find A and B, the uh, way to go about this is that you subtract 360 with the sum of this angle and this angle. That these two are going to be able, uh, are going to be equal, so you subtract subtract 360 and uh, subtract these angles from 360, and then you divide the result by two. You're going to get these two angles over here. That is why, because the reason for that is that because these two are equal, so you know whatever you're going to get an answer that's going to be A or B, and of course the next is going to be equal to that one. The this basically we're going to start with this in the next lecture of course uh, but over here i just want to see i just want you to see that over here you can this is known a transversal line so basically what a transversal line is that if a line crosses two parallel lines this is known as a transversal line this is known as a transversal basically this line uh, transverses through these two lines over here so if you look at these too closely, we just discussed the vertically opposite angles. If you look over here, 1 and 8 are vertically opposite, right? 1 and 8 are vertically opposite because like I said, it's making an X. It does not have to be a perfect X like you make in English, but still making an X. 
So 1 and 8 over here are called uh, and the adjacently opposite angles just like, just like that 4 and 3 are 2 and 5 and 7 and 6. These are the pairs that you need to identify. Once you identify these, it, the solution to these uh, uh, problems will be really easy for you. And also remember the fact that 1, 3, 4 and 8 are ma uh, making a total angle of 360 just like that. 2, 7, 5 and 6 are going to make an angle of 360. If you keep this in mind, there won't be any problem solving this, uh, solving these questions and we will be continuing with this problem in the next lecture and hopefully finish the lines and angles topic for coordinate geometry. Thank you very much.